<laughs> Sometimes I like to do that. Alright, well what's up everybody? Hello and welcome. Nope, that's not, I've never said what's up everybody. What I usually say is hello and welcome, welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, you guys, which means that it is vlog day and yeah, I got a vlog. I got a vlog all planned out for you guys. I think we have all of the segments this week. I'm going to do that thing right now where I put all of the timestamps here so you can see what's here what's included, what might be coming up. I do have a beer in the fridge getting chilled, ready to ready to consume a beer tasting. We're gonna have some vape mail, not a crazy amount of vape mail, but some vape mail, including one thing that I'm actually pretty really excited about. I, I, I saw the packaging. I saw the packaging on the outside and I went, all right, I can't wait for vape mail stuff, but we're gonna do uh, viewer mails as well. I'm gonna get some text messages as well from Eric Vinyl and Vapor. We're gonna have favorite comments of the week. We're gonna have a very random juice tasting. I've got a retro vaping prepared, and I even have a Grim Green Reviews a Vape Thing that he's never even tried before segment as well. So welcome, welcome you guys to the vlog. Thank you for coming to hang out with me. Love the vlog. Just love the vlog and I love it when everybody comes and hangs out and we can all we can all we can all vlog together. But before we get too far into this vlog, I do want to do that thing that is my favorite thing to do where I hear from one of my subscribers. So once again, it is time to hear from Justin Bacon. What up, Nick? Justin Bacon again. Wanted to see if you could give a uh, shout out to my brothers and sisters in arms, all my veterans, all my active military. Uh, also want to give a shout out to the two groups that I'm in on Facebook, Military Vape Group, which is open to uh, all military personnel, current and prior. Um, uh, shout out to uh, Frankie Estrada. He's the founder of that group. You know, he really looks out for us, takes good care of us. Um, also, Squid Vapor Group, which is open to any users or fans of uh, Squid Industries products. And I want to give a shout out to the CEO of Squid Industries, who's also the founder of that group, Eric Buss. He is also uh, a veteran himself. Um, and I want to give a shout out to those two guys in particular, Frankie and Eric, because they hooked me up with this beautiful double barrel V2. So without them, I would not have this and I love it. It's my favorite mod. So big thanks, big shout out to them. Um, and of course, you know, as a veteran, I got love for the military. And, and all the guys in those groups, you know, I mean, it, it, it's just great. They're great. Um, so if you could squeeze in, you know, a shout out uh, <clears throat> for them, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks, brother. I'm out. Peace. Yeah, fuck yeah, absolutely, Justin Bacon. First of all, shout out to Justin Bacon. And of course, of course, everybody, military, you are absolutely always, always shouted out. Thank you for your service. And then we're going to shout out. Frankie and Eric Bus. Eric, uh, I know Eric. I've I've talked to Eric on on many occasions. He's he's always been nothing but a genuine dude to me. Eric is legit. He's the real deal. Shout out to the Squid Industries group on Facebook. I'm a member of that group as well. I see the notifications all the time, and I'm happy to support Squid Industries as well as Eric. And they are. Absolutely. All shouted out, Justin Bacon. Absolutely. Really good. Really good shout out request, man. If anybody else out there has any videos similar to Justin Bacon's video that you'd like to send in and see featured on the show, you want to shout yourself out, you want to shout your shop out, you want to just shoot the shit, tell your story, talk about your setup. Totally cool. Send it on over to Nick at GrimGreen.com and just, you know, just mark it. That one favorite thing, that one thing that you do. I, I say this every freaking week, I think, that's never been established. That one thing is kind of like the established thing. Like, just put that one thing in the subject. Chances are I'll see the attachment and it will get watched and downloaded accordingly. I've got a big folder of these videos, but I could always, always use some more. So yeah, sure. If you want to, I mean, everybody has access to a smartphone these days, I feel like. So just shoot a little video, uh, landscape, if you can, not necessarily portrait, but 
landscape tends to work a lot better. Portrait, it's okay. Portrait videos are fine. Just if you can remember, if you're like, oh, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to shoot a quick video, send it on over to Grim Green, just boom, just turn your camp, just turn your phone sideways. Awesome. Awesome. Justin Bacon. Awesome. Um, right now I would like to talk about just the things that I have va been vaping and it's a lot. I just keep setting, st this is my plot in life. I'm just, I just have a lot of vape stuff. I have a lot of vape stuff, and believe me when I say I'm not bragging here. I have a lot of vape stuff. I just end up setting up a lot of vape stuff. I I really like vaping, and I really like this like the like the hobbyist side of vaping. And so I constantly get stoked when it's like, oh, atomizer, and this atomizer, and this mod, and boom, and that's a new setup. And I'm like, well, I've been wanting to try out this tank. I got to review this tank. So tank, boom, on that setup. I just end up setting up things. One of my favorite things in vaping, apart from actually vaping, is like setting stuff up, like fiddling and setting and wicking and coils and coil heads and juice and wicks, and and I love it. And I just keep. I just keep setting things up, but there's going to be a lot of repeats in here. Um, Kennedy Vindicator, I have recently re-fallen in love with the Kennedy RDA. This is still on the very little last bit of my Turkish harvest. One of the things, one of the positive things about having lots of setups going at the same time is your juice consumption appears to be less than it really is. Like this is one of like 12 setups that I have going right now. And so I vape it and I vape it and then, and then I'll set it down maybe even for like the rest of the day. And then I get to keep ju keep vaping this Turkish harvest, but it is, it's slowly, slowly running out, but I love it. I, I love the Turkish harvest. I love, I just like Turk in general. I like that whole squad. I like Turk. I, I like uh, Irby Irby. I like AJ Holland. I think they're just great people. And the Turkish harvest liquid for this time of year, Oh, it's perfect. And, you know, like I said a million times, I've recently re-fallen in love with the Kennedy Atomizer, and I just can't stop vaping it. Such a good atomizer, such a good vape. Uh, I, I just... I just really like that vape. Also, that uh, Reload Vapor Squonker still hanging in there with the Profile RDA, Profile Mesh RDA that is just a rad little banger. I think I'm going to have a review for this uh, either this Friday or, or maybe we'll just roll it into next week. I'm not really sure. Haven't decided. It's loaded up with the Fug, the Lowrider juice that I love so much. That airflow is just uh, so damned smooth. I've got a few sub ohm tank setups as well. Let's get let's get all these out of the way together. Ah, Vaporesso Lux mod with the Scion 2 Plexus Mesh coil head on top. This is loaded up with Fall Delight. Is a it's a tobacco juice and it's just an overall uh, really delightful vape. I'm really struggling, and I know this is a dumb thing to say, but I'm really struggling with like those Falcon tanks versus the Inokin Scion tanks. I keep liking one more than the other on different occasions. Like last night is a perfect example. I was sitting in my chair and I was watching reruns of Ink Master. Yeah, I dove back into Ink Master season two for some reason, just marathon watching it. And I was sitting there out there and I had my Scion 2 with the Plexus Mesh coil heads and I'm vaping it and I'm like, no, these coil heads are, are awesome. These coil heads are like my favorite coil heads, right? Good, just really, really good. And then I'd pick up this, my V-Zone E-Mask, and this has the Falcon Resin on it, and then I'd start vaping this, and I'd be like, no, okay, these, these are my favorite coil heads. It's not the Inokin, it's definitely the Horizon Tech, cool. Now, I'm glad I decided that finally. and it's great. It's an unbelievable vape. And then I would set that down and I'd go back to my Scion with those Plexus Mesh coil heads and I'd take a few more toots and I'd be like, no, wait, maybe I, maybe I like these coil heads more than the Falcon coil heads. I literally just keep going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And I've come to the conclusion that they're both just stellar, stellar coil heads. Falcon Resin Artisan Tank on top of my V-Zone E-Mask, uh, the Scion 2 Tank on top of the Vaporesso Lux, and I have the Scion Tank in blue on top of the Proton Kit. And the Proton Kit, I've been a big cheerleader of the Proton Kit. I really like it. I think it's a nice 
kit, dual 18650, high wattage, beautiful display, really nice fit and finish, but even just holding it next to the Vaporesso Lux, it feels, it just feels a little bit cheaper to me. And I get some like weird rattliness that happens. And I don't know whether that's like the joystick or this button moving around. There's some, there's a little bit of play in this button. It could be the door, but as I handle it and use it, I just get a little bit of like rattly noisiness from it. And I don't get that from the Vaporesso Lux. It's just interesting to see. I had like, you know, such, such a fondness for this Proton kit and I still do have a fondness for this Proton kit, but using it side by side with some other mods, you kind of start to notice some things, a little bit of like rattliness going on in there, but you know, it, it's good. It's whatever. It's the Inokin Proton kit and I still really like it, really stand behind this. And I just like these uh, Plexus mesh coil heads a lot, enough to like conflict me as to what I like more, the Scion ones, the Plexus ones, or the Falcon ones, the Plexus ones or the Falcon ones. And I just keep going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. This has, so this one, sorry, this has strange fruit spoiled milk in it with some uh, CBD and it's, it's really good, it's delicious. This has that Mox juice in it that I have recently fallen in love with. It's kind of fantastic. So good. So good. It's nice having some good coil heads. And then I've got this Mad Advocan Manta sub-ohm tank on here as well on top of that uh, Asmodus EOS 2 mod that had the really jumpy around, you know, resistance on it when I first got it out and was fiddling around with it it kind of seems to have gone away, like magically, I guess. Everything I've been putting on here has been reading the resistance like perfectly. Every single time, no jumping around. I don't know, God, what did I have on there before? Was it the velocity? What did I have on here before where the resistance was jumping around? I'm gonna have to figure it out. I'm gonna have to go back and look and see if it was something with that particular atomizer topper or if it is actually something with this mod. But this is something I've been rocking as well. This is filled up with uh, White Label Juice Co. White Gummy Bear. White, the delicious juice. And I think I finally figured out this Advocate Manta and it's all about the draw. It's all about the draw. I've been talking a lot about draw lately. Like you don't just give everything the same like stiff, hard draw. Some things require a little bit more delicate of a draw and this sub on tank is honestly one of them. This is a really flavorful coil head in here, but it doesn't feel like say the Inokin or the Falcon. It's even a little bit more like you need to give it a lighter draw even than that. It's And I did this before and it was really annoying. I mean, it was really goofy in my hermetic video when I was like, like you kind of give it a hermetic style vape. And no, I wasn't making fun of Matt Cully and his tiny, tiny mouth, I promise. I was really honestly just trying to like show the draw technique that I use. Ready? Like that. Okay, get the air out first real smooth like that and it's delicious and you get a nice delicious like saturated feeling vape when you do that kind of draw it doesn't have that sudden like verge of going dry feeling to it anyway that's something that i have been vaping uh and the other day on the instagram patreon live stream i don't remember who it was it might have been pizza beard. Oh, I'm not really sure who it was. Um, was talking about the reload RTA and how uh, it was leaking on them or they would see juice in certain areas. And I was like, no, I've never really had that problem. So we came inside and we just built and set up the reload vapor RTA. And I genuinely forgot how much I love this RTA. The reload RTA, in my opinion, is like the gold standard of RTAs. It makes me excited to try that stacked RDA that Tony B recently released. I still haven't tried the Mike Vapes RTA and I still haven't tried the Dead Rabbit Heathen RTA either. I need to try all of these RTAs because after using the Reload Vapor, uh, it did it. 
Everybody heard it, right? Someday I'm going to figure out what that is. I'm probably dying. That's probably what it's from. It's probably a slow disease that's slowly going to kill me and it makes my throat do the honky thing. But after using this Reload Vapor RTA so consistently over the last few days, I really like RTAs. I instantly got out my Faro Mini RTA and it is on deck, ready to be ready to be built and filled because I used to really like that RTA as well. And I love going back to things that I used to love. Like there's just it's just the plight of my life. It's the plight of being a YouTuber and having, you know, and this is, look, this is real first world problems. And again, I'm not bragging in any capacity, but there are vaping products that I love. I just love them. And the Reload Vapor RTA is one of them. And because of all the other products that come out, sometimes things that I really truly love inevitably have to get like retired, like put in the cabinet put on the shelf. I need to make room for all this other vape stuff coming in. And I love going back and revisiting something that I really, really loved. This Reload Vapor RTA is banging. I also am going to set up the Coil Art Mage V2 RTA because Eric Vinyl and Vapor said that that was like one of his favorite RTAs. And I was like, I've just never tried that one. So I'm going to set it up. I'm all about RTAs now for some reason. This Sitting on top of that Ogvape V200, which is one of my favorite mods of all time, it is filled up with, uh, speaking of Eric and Vinyl and Vapor, this is filled up with his Deep Cuts Dragon Shake. Awesome. This is just a fantastic vape. 0.14, dual fuse Clapton's, 57 watts, go. And it's got very much that, like, smooth you know, uh, sort of like slightly restricted lung hit, but you just need to drag on it a little bit softer and it's got that really smooth airflow. It's real easy to wick. I just like this RTA. Still really like this RTA. I do have uh, a singular, no, two. I got two pod systems that have been going. The, uh, I don't know if I would really call this a pod system. Lost Vape, Orion, right? It's amazing. Filled up with Strawberry Circus 12 milligram, 5050 PGVG. Dig it, dig it a lot. Took this with me to uh, Knott's Berry Farm. James and I went to Knott's Berry Farm and I vaped this the whole day. And it's and it's just fantastic. And then like, as far as like a pod pod system, the Kilo 1K has just become my favorite pod system. I hate that I only have one battery for it. I need to buy a few more Kilo 1K batteries, but all of the Kilo 1K flavors have been top notch. This is the lemon meringue flavor. It's delicious. Now, I'm not a person that generally really loves salt nicks. For some reason, this Kilo 1K, I can vape it and vape it, and it doesn't give me any weird salt nicky like things that usually happen. It's not really harsh. It doesn't make me short of breath. I can vape it. I love the nutty flavor. It reminds me of a tobacco. I love the green apple flavor. There's a few. There's two other ones I haven't tried. There is a strawberry milk flavor, I believe, that I haven't tried yet. The mango is delicious. The, the, the lemon meringue is delicious. And that's what I have in here now is the lemon meringue. And now it's going to be the most boring vape segment of all time where you watch me vape on a pod system. There's just no way to really make this look fun or exciting. This is literally just like, you know, a vessel, right? It's just to get nicotine. It's not meant to be like romanticized, I guess. And now, now I'm just talking. Three. I got three things left. Mass Mods. Hermetic. This is filled up with a liquid that I don't lick it. It's filled up with Smacks. Lick it. Mass Mods. Squonker. Hermetic RDA. Love this combo. This is a combo that I'm going to try to keep around for a while. I don't want to let this one quite get retired yet or go into a shelf or go in a cabinet or anything because I've been enjoying it so, so much. The Hermetic is a great RDA and it is, uh, it's just a fantastic squonker. This is with a Chop Top DHD Stay Gold on there and uh, I love it. I'm trying to get a reddish, you know, uh, Chop Top for the top of this Hermetic. I would really like it to match like the panels on this Mass Mods, but I don't know. I feel like the gold is good enough, right? Yeah, it's that slow drag. It's that slow, restricted drag. Still, still heavily hanging in there as well with that Mike Vapes recurve squonker. All drama aside, I really like this squonker. It's loaded up with Rocket Blast. It's got the goat 
on top if anybody's curious. Yeah, that's the goat. That's all I can show you of the goat at this particular time and place, but that is the goat. Listen to how crackly this is. Oh, dead battery, right? It's the vlog. Welcome to dead batteries. All right, new batteries. Oh, there we go. That's the sound we're looking for. That, that crackly flavorness. Awesome, awesome. More about the goat later on. Obviously, when we eventually release the goat, I'll do like a goat video, but right now we're just, you know, building the hype train, I guess. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, just the daily banger of all daily bangers, it's that Aspen Modco Monarch. This one is named Fjord, and I've got it topped right now with the Reload Vapor X RDA, and this has been the topper on this mod for quite a while now. This is my Pony on Acid CBD mix that I love, and I love, I love, and I just vape it so, so much. I'm thinking about mixing this up. I'm thinking about putting a new RDA on top of this Monarch. I love the Reload Vapor X, but I think, I think I've run my course right now with the Reload Vapor X, so I'm looking for a new atomizer to put uh, on top of this, and I think I might have one in my vape mail. I think that's where this atomizer that I'm really excited about that we haven't opened yet, I think that's where this is going to live. Awesome. Awesome. It's hard to get away from that Reload Vapor X RDA. I don't know why, what it is about it. I just really, really like that RDA. Well, now that we are making this vlog just real, real long, it is time. It's time for beer. It's time to jump in a time machine. We're probably going to end up back here in the office, but it doesn't matter because my time machine is right over there. We can go back and wherever we want. You want to go see ancient Egypt? Come on. But we're going to end up right back here. It is time. It's time for a beer tasting. How was the trip in your time machine? It's a, a little bit disorienting at first, I guess. I don't know what I'm talking about. That made no sense. Uh, Beecher, Beecher Howard's text, Be Coil Turd. That was Coil Turd texting me during the beer segment. Doesn't he know better than to do that? Anyway, we got a beer. We got a beer we're gonna taste. This is Wachusett Brewery Blueberry. It's literally just called Blueberry. New England's favorite blueberry ale. This came from the, uh, you know, uh, goddess, goddess elixirs. His name was his name was Andrew or Anthony, something with an A. Andrew, I really think it was Andrew. Anyway, we're gonna go with that. So I got this beer. I got a blueberry ale that I'm really excited about. We got this in the mail uh, last week, I believe. Before we had that, uh, you know, last week we did the watermelon ale. Today we got blueberry. Shit, man. I don't know. What's that? Guava? Is guava? Is guava gonna be next? I don't. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna pour this. Oh wow, it's light. This is a lot lighter than I thought it would be. I was. I don't know why I was expecting something. Uh, a little bit darker or even something a little bit hazy out of this, but it appears, it appears to just be a very, very clear, clear little blueberry ale right there. Gonna be drinking it out of a Duval glass. Can you see me behind it? No? All right. I know literally nothing about this juice. Zero, less than zero about this juice and I'm not even gonna look at it. Juice, beer. What? It's been a long day. I know nothing about this beer and I'm not even gonna actually gonna look at it until I already taste it. So we're gonna jump into it right now. Wachusett's Blueberry. Cheers, here's to you guys. All right, I mean, I get a little bit of blueberry out of that. I do get, and it's a, it's a, it's not a, okay. Thoughts, then talk. The blueberry that I get out of this isn't necessarily like a, like a blueberry slushy type of thing. Like that's, you know, being a vapor and being in the vape world, that's something that you come to expect. It's like blueberry, it's probably gonna taste like a blue raz, like a blue raz slushy, something like that. The blueberry in this is a very natural, natural blueberry. It's like they took the pulp of a real blueberry and somehow intertwined it and got it into this beer. Otherwise, it's a real nice sort of light, crisp, clean ale style beer. Yeah, that blueberry is real nice. 
That blueberry is right up front and it's very clean. It's not like a weird, cloying, sweet, like weird blueberry flavor. It's it's honestly really refreshing. I'm surprised at how much blueberry I get out of it because sometimes, you know, you try beers and it's like it's got uh, this, this, and this, like X, Y, and Z, and you kind of go, oh, all right, I don't, I don't really get those honey notes or I don't really get those, you know, other berry notes or anything like that. This blueberry is like a perfect fit for this beer. And, it, it, and I know I describe e-liquids this way, but this beer is a very cohesive flavor. It tastes like blueberry ale. It's not like, oh, it tastes like beer. And then, oh, on the aftertaste, I get some blueberry. No, from start to finish, as soon as it hits your tongue, it's like blueberry ale. And that's what it tastes like. It's delicious. <sighs> so it looks like you're gonna get two beer segments for the price of one. So I'm just gonna explain what happened. I sat down, I shot a whole beer segment for this Wachusett Blueberry Ale, which was delicious. I talked about it for quite a while. Did some beer, did some beer pairings with with vape stuff, and uh, I drank it. And I drank this whole beer, and I ended the beer segment. And I was like, "Fuck, that was a good beer." I'm so happy with the way that beer segment went. And then I look at my camera, and it says unable to record. And I went, "What?" And so I looked. My memory card was full, and it stopped recording after four minutes. And what's great about all of the stuff that's packed into these new DSLR cameras, it still doesn't, like, beep or fucking warn you that it stopped recording. So, so we're going to do this again. So we're going to dig into this guy right here, Belching Beaver Brewery. This is, a, this is a beer that came to me via Smacks. They sent a beer care package. Belching Beaver Brewery is a San Diego-based brewery. I have been to the brewery. I've been to the tasting room. They have a lot of really great beers. And this peanut butter milk stout is one of their most, I don't know, I want to say interesting beers. They do a horchata milk stout as well. That is the single sweetest beer I've, I've ever had in my life. If you ever have the opportunity to buy a bottle of Belching Beavers Horchata Stout, try it. Just, just try it and let me know what you think because it tastes like they literally dump like sugar into this beer. It's the cr it's like candy. It's like drinking a cake. And this peanut butter milk stout is also on the sweetened side. And I know they use like artificial flavoring. So this peanut butter milk stout might be a really good milk stout underneath, but you can't ever really get past that like overwhelming peanut butter flavor that's in it. In fact, this beer has been in the vlog in the past, but it's been probably oh shit i think i had this beer in the vlog back in 2013 maybe maybe 2013 maybe like late 2012 i want to say it's been forever since i've had this particular beer so uh, i'm gonna get this to pair with it i'm gonna get this to pair with it i'm gonna that's it. That's all I can do. Yeah, that's all. It's just two tobaccos. Before, see, I had this whole big thing about pairing with that blueberry, you know, that, that blueberry ale and how the sweet flavors of the liquids kind of overpower like the really subtle blueberry flavor that's in there. And for anybody curious, this Wachusett's blueberry ale is like one of the best beers I've ever had. It's just delicious from top to bottom. It's got this really clean, crisp, like American wheat ale style beer with these really delicate, fresh blueberry notes in it. it it's kind of incredible. But you wouldn't know that because my camera didn't record anything I was saying. And at the, after that, after, after I'm like, great, so next up is viewer mail. Like after I end the segment and I look at my camera and I see that it wasn't recording, I feel the most foolish that I've ever felt because I literally sat here and recorded an entire segment to the camera that wasn't even recording. Do you know how weird and like defeated you feel after that? You're like, oh, well, I'm an idiot. So first things first, let's have our first little swig of this Belching Beaver peanut butter milk stout. As you can see, it's dark. It's dark and it looks like freaking motor oil. Cheers! Here's to you guys. Yeah. Okay, and this is a... Uh, 
this is a beer that's on the completely other end of the spectrum than the one I just had. The other one I just had was like fresh, delicate blueberries in a nice, like crisp, crispy, clean wheat ale. This is like a stout. It is syrupy. It is not carbonated or effervescent in any way. It's really like syrupy. It's really a thick syrupy stout that's like drinking peanut butter with beer mixed in it. Which is to say it's actually really good. And look, if you're a fan of peanut butter and you're like, I need peanut butter. I'm like, I'm a huge fan of peanut butter. I need peanut butter like in my daily life. If I go one day without eating peanut butter, then that day is not a good day. Like I love peanut butter. I eat peanut butter constantly. It's it's my lifeblood. Like most people are like ranch, you know, ranch dressing. That's that's something that, you know, that's my jam, right? Some people are like hot sauce. No, hot sauce. I have hot sauce on everything. Put hot sauce on my life. No, peanut butter. Put peanut butter on my life and, and I, then that will be a happy life. So as a big peanut butter fan, this beer is fucking delicious. And I can tell, I can really tell. I mean, obviously... They're not going to brew beer with like like natural peanut butter or like in the casks or I mean that's ridiculous, right? So of course it's like an added flavoring. Of course it's like this artificial like peanut butter flavoring. But with that said, the peanut butter flavoring it, it tastes uh it tastes pretty good in this beer. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of like beer snobs out there that would not really want to be associated with any like artificial peanut butter flavorings in the beer or it's like you know it's a really artificial kind of like a pedestrian thing to do like oh you put uh flavorings in your beer thankfully i am not that guy so i can enjoy a nice uh a nice big big stout this is a big beer and it's just so thick and syrupy in your mouth and it's weird drinking a beer with such little carbonation to it hmm but damn it, damn it, it's good. So I'm not, I, I don't have much to pair this with. I have a Vladin RE that is filled with the Tarturo custard liquid. And then I have a Cubano Stig, which is like a pipe tobacco, like a, no cigar, like a cigar, like a moist cigar tobacco flavor. Uh, I think I'm gonna start with the uh, Tarturo first. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, sure. That's fine. You know what? That's fine. This Vladin uh, RE pod was uh, incredibly weak, incredibly gurgly. I've been letting it sit around for a while, so here's how you get rid of gurgle on a pod. Grab your pod by the bottom, you just flick the fuck out of it. You just get all that juice out of the pa air passageway. And then, when you plug it back on, it should be gurgle free. And it was gurgle free, but this is also not a great custard peanut butter beer not really uh doing one of these numbers not really going together really well it's more like this it would be like this so the next thing i want to try i guess is the cubano vigod stig cheers mm. okay that's good that's actually really very good it's like drinking, it's like drinking a beer, like a stout with like a cigar. Like they pair so well together. The flavors complement each other so well. Good. Wow. Okay. That's good. That's good. That's not a bad little beer pairing. Let's look over on uh, Beer Advocate. I'd like to find a little bit more about this, this, uh, this particular beer because I haven't looked at it in a while. Belching. Belching Beaver Peanut Butter Stout. Beer Advocate rates it as a 4.0. So many burps. 
so many burps and weird gases. Like I'm a weird burpy gassy person anyway, which is, you know, it's just something I've had to live with. But when you drink beer or something carbonated and you're trying to talk, it just, it comes out everywhere. I'll just burp out of my fucking ears. Peanut butter milk stout, 4.1 out of five stars. Let's see, the stout pours a dark brown that settles into a motor oil black with a small silky half inch finger tan head, leaving a thin veil over the glass. No surprise, it smells like roasted peanut butter with a hint of dark chocolate. Taste follows the nose on this stout, well-rounded roasted peanut and chocolate flavor with a light coffee taste obtained by the milky sweetness. Overall, it's a nice stout, a bit watery, not much viscosity, but still drinks smooth. I would say that. I would say that it drinks smooth. It's got a little bit of a heavy mouthfeel. To me, mouthfeel is something that I had to evaluate uh, as a career, as my job for years and years and years and years. And the hardest thing I've ever had to do was we t we tasted like, this is back when I was a coffee taster. Hi, little surprise getting to know Grim Green. How about that? Let's learn about coffee real fast. So back when I was a coffee taster, I was a coffee taster for many, many years. And we didn't, it wasn't like, you know, people were like, oh, you were a coffee taster. Did you, so you just sat around on couches and drank lattes all day? Being a coffee taster is you have to taste like the pure essence of the coffee. You, you brew the coffee intensely strong. It's like double the recipe. So the recipe for coffee is, do we, do we all know the recipe for coffees? It's two tablespoons of coffee for every six ounces of water. That's like the universal coffee brewing method. It's universal. A anybody can do that. You remember two tablespoons for every six ounces of water, you'll be good to go. This was like uh, this was like double and a half. This was like almost a triple brew of coffee and it bre it's brewed in tiny little cups and the coffee grounds are at the bottom and you have a slurpable amount of coffee on the top that you slurp with a spoon and spit into giant spittoons on the ground, right? That's being a coffee taster. Me and my boss, Doug, we were coffee tasters and we tasted all of the coffee that came into that particular Starbucks roasting plant. I don't want to, you know, sit here and like explain the whole supply chain operation of how Starbucks works, but needless to say, it was a lot of coffee. I mean, we were tasting hundreds and hundreds of cups every single day. And one of the exercises that we did uh, on one particular day was we just evaluated mouthfeel. So there's so many different flavor components that happen inside beverages or beer or, or you know, mixed drinks or coffee or whatever that you kind of have to pick out. You gotta pick out the sweetness, you gotta pick out the finish, you gotta pick out this, that, and the other. Are there any flavor defects? Is it acrid, is it musty, is it phenol, is it all these things? And then what you have to do is evaluate the mouth feel. Like how does the liquid feel in your mouth? To me, this particular beer has a pretty, a fairly heavy mouth feel. If this was a coffee, it would be like an Indonesian coffee, like a Sulawesi or like a Sumatra, that type of like, heavier mouthfeel. Yeah, it's got a real heavy mouthfeel, real lingering, lingering aftertaste. You taste the stout, you taste the peanut butter, even when you're done drinking it. I, I like this beer and that might, you know, and that's, it's whatever this, I don't think this is like a world renowned beer. Like I don't think there's people on waiting lists to get this beer. It's not like a vanilla bean dark Lord from three Floyds or something like that. Like people aren't lining up to get this beer. It's not at the top of anybody's like, I must, I have to try this. It's like Pliny the Elder, Hetty Topper, and then, you know, peanut butter milk stout from Belching Beaver Brewery. But Fuck it, I don't care. It's a really good beer, I really like it. If you have the chance, honestly, to try any of the Belching Beaver stuff, the, the horchata, try it. It's crazy sweet, like sugary sweet. And the peanut butter milk stout, it's a milk stout that's very, 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 very peanut buttery. Anyway, I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna edit some video, and I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my evening with this beer. Belching Beaver, peanut butter milk stout, pretty freaking delicious if I do say so myself. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna get back in the time machine. We're gonna go back to earlier this day, and it's time to open some vape mail. Well, if all of that went to plan, then you just watched a beer tasting, which means it is time to open the small amount of vape mail that I have here. There's some DHL packages. A few other packages as well. Where's my knife? Breeze scented garbage bags, I guess. Ah! Knew that. Love that, love that quality from DHL. Your packages delivered kind of. 
I wonder if this is something I can't show on camera. Ugh, I don't know. I probably should have looked into this a little bit more. Um, I will say it's a little flavor banger RTA that I don't know who it came from. I don't know who manufactured it. There's no engravings anywhere on it, which makes me think that this is a uh, sort of a prototypey situation, some sort of a beta testy situation. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and play it a little bit safe and not show you this RTA, which I realize is a little bit of a letdown. I'm kind of being a tease right now. Um, I don't know where this came from. No, it just says Hong Kong. I don't know. I don't know where this came from, so I'm gonna, if I can show this on camera, I'll get some clarification and, uh, and we'll put it on camera. We'll, we'll, we'll show you next week, I guess. It is kind of a cool little, uh, really short i mean it's not really even taller than a than a an rda like it's shorter than the kennedy rda drip tip included it's shorter than the kennedy rda and it appears to be a little flavor banger rta probably a restricted lung hit probably something i would really really be into but it came with no packaging it was just in a plastic bag there's no engravings on it I'm sketchy about showing it on YouTube. So we're just gonna have to move on from that. Got something here from the old Geek Vape. It seems like uh, every week I got something from the Geek Vape. Oh, and everybody's going mouth to lung crazy. This is the Amit mouth to lung tank, which I'm not obviously, I mean, I'm not gonna set it up right now, but I do, you know, I wanna take a quick look at it. For the most part, I liked the original Amit RTA. This is their mouth to lung RTA. It's a little two post guy on the inside. It's got uh, some underneathy style airflow. I mean, if this had a ceramic clamp in it, it would kind of be like the hermetic of, of, of RTAs, of mouth to lung RTAs, that the deck reminds me of the hermetic a little bit. Got airflow along the top. If we close it off to the lowest airflow, yeah. I mean, shit, that feels real mouth to lungy. One thing I don't understand is why every mouth to lung drip tip has to be the tiniest, swoopiest little thing. Am I the only one that would vape a mouth to lung with like an 810 drip tip? I would uh, personally, yes, I would definitely do that. But it's got, I mean, it's got a whole bunch of airflow across the top. Hey, you can kind of get a better look at it. That's the Amit mouth to lung RTA. It's got some airflow like right along the top there. It's got that swoopy drip tip. Man, kind of cool. Kind of cool. Oh, we got something from Hell Vape. We got something from Hell Vape, which means it's either going to be the Drop Dead RDA, which I haven't tried yet. It's going to be the Dead Rabbit RTA, which I haven't tried yet. It's going to be one of those two things. Oh, fantastic. Would you look at that? Would you just look at that? Would you just look at that? I've got a blue and a gunmetal Dead Rabbit RTA. Yeah, shit. All right, well, it looks like I'm gonna be setting up two things this week because I really would like to set up this Dead Rabbit RTA. I'm sure most everybody can remember, but I was a pretty big fan of the original Dead Rabbit RDA. Like, it was in my top of 2017 video. I really liked that RDA. So I'm really interested to see the Dead Rabbit RTA. A little AFC up here. Got some knurling along the top. That's how you fill it. Pretty straightforward so far. 810 drip tip, sure. You're not gonna be able to see it, but it's kind of engraved on the chimney right there with the Dead Rabbit logo. I'm hoping, what I'm hoping is that he didn't just throw the Dead Rabbit deck into an RTA, which is essentially exactly what he did. Well, that's interesting. There you go. Um, th th okay, that's fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reserve my judgments until I build it and vape it, but I have a lot of thoughts on putting the Dead Rabbit deck inside of an RTA. So cool, well that's uh, that's definitely something that may get set up in this vlog, just cause I was, I was literally like just talking about it. I had no idea that the Dead Rabbit RTA was gonna be in there, but since the Dead Rabbit RTA is like a little bit older, I guess, of a product, there's already a bunch of reviews out for it. I might be setting that up this week because I just really want to try it. I believe this is going to be juice. Yeah, we got some juice from Lost in the Sauce. Real, uh, real brightly, brightly colored labels, but I kind of like it. Like I like those colors and I like the, the logo that they've used. This is Blackberry Punch. This one is a pineapple guava. And this last one is a green apple berry. Uh, all those actually sound kind of red. 
rad. Um, I'm going to save these for a very random juice tasting for a future vlog because I already have a very random juice tasting for today. So we will definitely use those uh, in the future. And that's it. Like, dude, vape mail's done. Uh, I just got one last package left and I know what's in it. Yeah, this is definitely, definitely gonna be the new Goon 25 millimeter. Are you kidding me? Yeah, dude, Goon, 25 millimeter Goon. So this isn't like the Goon V2. This isn't like the Goon V3. This isn't a new version of the Goon. This is a 25 millimeter version of the goon yeah and it's a big boy it's 25 millimeters man same as the recoil rebel it's got a slick new logo on there it's got that goon airflow that's the dots not the slot it's got the dots airflow it's got that goon 1.5 deck in there as well i cannot seem to get out i think i think this is going to be the new atomizer that sits on top of my uh Aspen Mod Co. Monarch Fjord Mod. Oh yeah, 25 millimeter fits on there freaking perfectly. Oh, and the interior AFC is all Ultem. That is fascinating. It's got that goon fit and finish, man. Goons have always gone together real well. O-rings always hold real well. AFC always really smooth. I like it with two airflow holes open. Oh yeah. Okay, all right, well, I'm excited about this Goon 25 for sure. Oh, and they went with hex key screws on top. That's real interesting too. So I guess that is actually going to be the end of the vape mail segment. Um, just don't have a lot of uh, vape mail this week, but I do have two things to set up. So I'm gonna build this Goon and we're gonna put some juice in it. Maybe I'll throw, well, I don't wanna try out a new juice. I'm, de I'm definitely gonna use Pony on Acid. I'm gonna put Pony on Acid on this Goon because this Goon is going to now live on top of my Aspen Modco Monarch. But while I'm cleaning this up and while I'm doing that, I'm also gonna build out that dead rabbit. I just need to find a liquid for it. Might use that Mox juice, but I'm also gonna build up that dead rabbit and then we are gonna come back and talk about both of them. So now. So I got everything cleaned up. I got everything set up. The first thing I built was the Goon, Goon 25. Really excited about this. Uh, pardon me. I don't even know where that burp came from. I apologize. The Goon is one of those like iconic legendary atomizers in my opinion. It's like the Goon, the Kennedy, for me, the Recoil. Like those are my three like go-to favorite atomizers. If anybody asks me, well, what's your favorite atomizer? It's like, well, I like the Goon, I like the Kennedy, and I like the Recoil. Like those are my go-tos. And I think the Goon is one of those like really iconic things. There's I've, there's very few vapors that I've ever met or talked to that aren't aware of the Goon or haven't, I mean, or themselves have tried the Goon or Goon owners. And the original Goon was one of my favorite atomizers of all time. And I really liked the Goon 1.5. The Goon 25 millimeter has that like big clamp deck in it. They used hex key screws. It's got the same clamps as before. I installed a 0.11 MTurk Alien build in here. It's exactly like building on a goon. It's one of those things like you just learn it and you never forget how to do it. It's, it's real easy to install, real easy to wick. That 25 millimeter diameter on the inside just gives you all sorts of room. I only installed uh, two and a half millimeter coils. MTurk always does his coils at two and a half millimeters. So that's what I installed in here. Real easy to build, real easy to wick. I loaded it up with Pony on Acid. I have taken no toots from this yet, but I got my airflow lined up and I got my airflow turned down to two holes on that AFC. Like I said before, the AFC is a uh, Ultem now on the inside. Ultem as opposed to stainless steel. I'm assuming that's gonna help keep down the heat. A, I'm assuming that's gonna help keep down the weight. B, it probably will help keep down the costs as well. But here we go. Pony on Acid CBD Goon 25, go. Yeah, and it's fucking awesome. It's flavorful, it's hot, it's it's plentiful. It feels real dense, real like just a big saturated vape. That's why I love drippers so much is because you control the liquid. So you can have it be as saturated or unsaturated if you want, you know, as you want it to be. The Goon has always been very, very conducive to blaying your juice. You can just 
belay your juice through the middle of the goon like a champ. But I got this goon sitting on top of this beautiful monarch from Aspen Mods Co. And I'm using the little, uh, you know, stock black 810 drip tip. So it's time to find a better matchy matchy drip tip, I think. Oh, what colors are on here? It's wood, it's purple, it's orange. Maybe I'll just go tried and true. Maybe I'll just throw a stay gold nub on there. Yep, that's how it's gonna go. Stay gold nub drip tip on top. Now, now it is a complete setup. Fuck, that's good. Fuck, that's good. Uh, love. Love it. I'm loving it. I don't regret this decision at all. This is where this atomizer is just going to live from now on for, like, the rest of its life. Fantastic. That's fantastic, Vape. So, Goon 25, it's the Goon. So it's not, it's, there's nothing new going on. It's the Goon. It's the most recent, greatest, best, up-to-date version of the Goon. It happens to be 25 millimeters as well. And it's the Goon, man. It's If you're a vapor, if you're a serious vapor, and you've never tried a Goon, and you've never owned a Goon, like, what are you doing, man? Get a Goon. There are legendary atomizers, and they're just fantastic. Okay, I'm going to stop. Stop gushing about the goon because I want to focus my attention right now on this here dead rabbit, which, all right, let's try to find a dead rabbit drip tip as well. I don't really like the red on there, so maybe we'll just go with uh, straight black. Oh, there we go. I found a red chop top for that hermetic. Uh, how cool is that? I didn't, know, I didn't know I had one, but that looks pretty dope. I'm gonna need to wrap this up. I really got nothing that's gonna go on here. I can't find any of my like uh, dock tips, like my knurled drip tips. All right, fine. Well, there you go. It's just black. It's like a black and speckly white guy. Sure, we'll just put it on there. Three and a half volts, sure. Uh, this is a 0.14, three and a half volts. It was really exploding vapor and the Dead Rabbit deck, look, the Dead Rabbit deck is real easy to build on. You just pre-clip your leads, roughly pre-clip your leads. You can drop them in, crank down the screws, finish trimming up your leads if you want to. Real easy to install, real easy to get them glowing real evenly. Now, the comment I made earlier about throwing the Dead Rabbit deck inside of an RTA, I wouldn't have done that. I would have done it a little bit differently. I still would have kept that Dead Rabbit deck, except I would have just low... I don't know why everybody likes their coils so high up in the air. Lower it. Lower it all down. Your, you know, your wicks are going to be closer to your juice flow so your juice has less distance to travel as it stands the dead rabbit rta has a deck that's real high you have to leave your wicks real long and tuck them way down into these little juice wells down at the bottom we could have just eliminated that lowered those posts made it like a postless deck design you can still have the dead rabbit idea you know you can still have the coil kind of spit out the side so you can trim it easier you can still keep the spirit of the dead rabbit without actually visually having to see like, okay, yeah, that's clearly a dead rabbit deck inside of this RTA. And even though this is the dead rabbit RTA and there's a dead rabbit deck inside of the RTA, I don't think the dead rabbit deck is the most useful deck for RTAs. Just because like I said, your coils are way up there. They're way up here in this chamber and your wicks have a long distance to travel and that juice has a long distance to travel back up feel like with the, you know without running the risk of repeating myself I would have liked to have seen those the, the 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 deck just much lower just lower that deck down you'd have you'd still have plenty of room in there you'd still have your wicks to be able to go into the juice holes except now it's going to have less distance to travel and I think it would wick much more efficiently. Now, with all that said, I still have not taken one single toot on this, so let's do that now. I'm just gonna open up the airflow all the way. It's a 0.14, 3.5 volts on the Vaporesso Lux, filled up with the Mox juice. So, let's give it a shot here. Really very, very, very super, super, super airy. I'm just gonna close this airflow down about halfway and give it another shot. So much better. So much better. And again, I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just getting old. Maybe it's just an age thing. I really like more restricted lung hits. I don't like that huge, huge, airy, 
cloud chasey, clouds bro clouds. Like I get it that you need a lot of airflow when you have a really hot, hot build. You need the airflow to kind of keep the temperature down a little bit on there. But when you have something like this, that's like an RTA that is like a flavor RTA, you need that airflow down, down, down. It's like, it's literally like a flavor adjustment all the way open, I can feel the flavor go way down. Close it off a little bit, you can feel that flavor go way up. And after I took those two toots, it started that la the very end of that second drag, it started to feel like a little bit on the verge of going dry. That as well, very much on the verge of going dry. Trying to get some bubbles happening, trying to get some juice going in there. I only use two and a half millimeter coils, so it's not packed with cotton in there. I left my cotton, you know, uh, very thin down there towards the bottom just to get that juice flowing. And it's got a long way to go to get up to your coils. Oh, yeah, there's a few bubbles happening. All right. Dry, dry. Like there was no juice in there. That was completely dry. And look, I could have wicked this incorrectly. There's only one way to wick it. You pull your wick down and you have to tuck it into this little chamber down there at the bottom. And I cut my wicks perfectly so that I could tuck them into that chamber. So down in that chamber, it's not stuffed with cotton. It's just the very tips of the cotton kind of just coming in contact with the juice inside your tank. I just think it's not keeping up because that deck is so high and so tall inside of an RTA. Nope, that one was real dry too. All right. Well, shit, maybe I'll have to rebuild it. Maybe I'll have to re-wick it. Uh, I'm, I'm running into a lot, lot, lot of dry hits. I mean, you saw the pictures. I'll show you the picture of my wicking again. Does that look like just way too much cotton? Should I have used much less cotton? I don't feel like that's an overabundance of cotton in there. I feel like for all intents and purposes, this should be wicking correctly. I'm gonna turn the voltage down. On it. Let's see if that helps at all. Let's go to 3.2 volts. Any bubbles happening? Some bubbles happening. Oh, there we go. That's a little bit better. Maybe it needs just a little bit less voltage. That feels a little bit better. That feels like it's a little bit more saturated with liquid. Sorry, I forgot to mention I used some staggered views coils in here. They came out to 0.12. Even at 3 volts, it's still right around 76 watts, which is, I don't know, pretty high for 0.12. I mean, not really. I mean, here's the thing. Everything is different. You wouldn't run an RTA at the same wattage that you would run a dripper with different airflow and different wicking capabilities. You kind of have to adjust your wattage and voltage based on the product you're using. This RTA, the build I have in here right now, the wicking I have in here right now, it seems to really be doing well at around three volts. Nope. That one tasted super dry. All right, well, obviously, I'm going to need to spend a little bit more time with that there Dead Rabbit RTA uh, before I can, you know, really review it or really pass judgment on it. I, I need to do some wicking experiments, evidently, as well. I'm still pretty convinced that the, the deck, it's that deck, it's that Dead Rabbit deck, because the wick is so long. The wick is so long that goes into your juice. I feel like it's just not, uh, I feel like it's just not keeping up well. That one was a little bit better. Maybe it really just needs time to sit in between each and every single toot in order to wick back up to your coils. So this week, I think we are going to skip getting to know Grim Green. And what we're going to do right now is my, kind of my new favorite segment. It's the Retro Vaping Juice Tasting Mashup. Go. <laughs> So, what I have this week is, I need a mod. I'm gonna need a mod to run this on. Just gonna grab my tried and true V-Zone E-Mask mod. So, I have an atomizer. I have an atomizer today that we are going to retro vape. This is an atomizer from not that long ago. Three years old, maybe? I think I, I, think I remember this from the very first Vape Jam UK, which was in 2015, and I brought it with me, and I vaped it there the whole time. J-Bo. 
release this atomizer. Jbo of now Jbo YouTube, which if you haven't checked out Jbo's YouTube, you should definitely check out his YouTube. He's he's doing some very cool new stuff that I haven't seen before in the vape industry, and he's doing some some pretty fantastic reviews. So congratulations, Jbo. Shout out to you. You have done a lot for this industry. I mean, apart from just the Jbo stuff that you know, like you used to release through all of the Wismec stuff, and now you're on YouTube, and I think it's fantastic. But this this came from Jbo. This was the they called it the indestructible duo atomizer or the indie duo atomizer and it was real weird a real weird atomizer i loved the shit out of this thing but it kind of never really caught on it's like a big 30 millimeter diameter and it's got a tiny 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 little 22 millimeter deck on the inside oh yeah that's hanging off the edges of this mod for sure but it's got a tiny little 22 millimeter diameter deck on the inside with like a velocity style deck. You just slide your coils in, real easy to build, real easy to wick. Now I don't have the uh, drip tip, you know, top cap for this. I think, I think I can use a DHD this, which if I can, which I can't, damn it. There was one DHD accessory that I could use on this Indie Duo. And if I don't find it, then I don't get to vape it. Cause I'm not just gonna tailpipe off of this gigantic opening. Oh, oh, holy shit. Okay, well that might be the actual uh, drip tip. I might've just found the actual drip tip for the Indie Duo. Why was I keeping this around for so long? Somewhere in my desk, that is the actual drip tip for the Indie Duo. And it had top in airflow. And it was this weird like two chambered plastic top. Your airflow went in and then down on the exterior of it between the two panels of plastic and then up through the bottom, like right at your coils. So that, that is what I'm gonna be retro vaping today. And what we're going to be retro vaping out of it is a juice from last week. Last week I got a box of Lioness Elixirs. This is the Courage, which I believe is the pistachio cheesecake. Let me double check that flavor profile. Yes, Courage is a creamy pistachio cheesecake and a graham cracker crust with a light raspberry drizzle to top it all off. So that's the juice we're gonna be tasting. So first things first, real quick, let's just do a knuckle test. Okay, um, real weird. <laughs> I mean, right out of the gate, real weird real bizarre i hope that it vapes different than this i had never had like a really good pistachio vape before and so it's kind of a flavor profile i'm on the lookout for because i like things like you know pistachio pudding and things like this this is a pistachio cheesecake with raspberry right out of the gate the knuckle test uh it tasted a little bit it tasted a little bit medicinal, and I'm hoping that that medicinal characteristic does not translate over into the vape of it. And this was a king for blaying your juice too. You could just blay your juice all day long on this, right through the middle, and it was fantastic. There were so many bleh friendly atomizers that came out in 2015 and 2016 that it became like a thing that like I needed. Like, I gotta be able to bleh. I gotta be able to bleh my juice. 0.14 at 74 watts seems to be producing the vapors. I'm actually gonna turn the wattage up a bit on this. Yeah, 81 watts seems a little bit better. Anyway, look at that. I got my Indie Duo. I got it loaded up with Lioness Elixir's Courage. And uh, yeah, let's just, uh, let's just have our first toot, shall we? Okay, that juice is real weird. So what I'm gonna do now is what I do every juice tasting segment. I'm gonna sit back with this just for a second. Uh, I'm gonna vape it and then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so I don't like this juice. I'm sorry, Lioness Elixirs. Maybe we'll try another one later on, but this Courage is not doing it for me in any capacity. The pistachio is real weird. 
and earthy. It's got like a, like a potting soil, sort of like a, a aroma and vapor flavor to it. The cheesecake component, I, I'm not getting a lot of cheesecake. I can't really get past that like uh, medicinal flavor. It does have, I don't know what the raspberry is in this, but that raspberry to me has a very medicinal flavor to it. And the medicinal potting soil, vo did the honky thing again, but that medicinal, oh, that medicinal potting soil, like weird, weird flavor. It's just, it's just real bizarre. Yeah, it's real bizarre. It almost it almost it reminds me of a wooden table for some reason. I can't get that visualization out of my head when I vape this. It's like putting your face down on like a freshly varnished wooden table and just like taking that aroma in. It's like varnish and potting soil and medicinal. I'm sorry. If you want me to be honest, I'm always going to be honest. Lioness elixirs Thank you for the very gracious package, the very gracious package of juice and beer, which we're going to be tasting a beer that, you know, uh, Andrew, I think his name was Andrew, Andrew from Lioness Elixir sent over. So I can't, I'm sorry, this juice, this juice is not for me. This juice is not a juice that I want to vape. And, and to be fair to Lioness Elixirs, I did pick the weirdest flavor that they offer. The other ones, Passion, Pomegranate, Acai, that sounds much better. Defender, which is a peach lemonade, that sounds much better. And Ferocity, which is strawberry watermelon, that sounds much better. But I picked Courage, which was pistachio cheesecake. So I get it that I picked like the weird, wackiest, like off ball flavor that they possibly do. But that's what's fast. That I mean, that's what drew my attention. Like that's what fascinated me. I was like, I really want to try that courage. I, I, gen I genuinely regret trying this courage. I kind of can't get the flavor out of my mouth and it's really bumming me out because I know that I'm gonna have to vape this a couple more times. So onto that Indie Duo RDA. Yeah, it's big. It's 30 millimeters and it hangs off the side of this Emask V-Zone. I don't love the airflow as much as I remember really loving the airflow. The airflow itself is real weird to line up and adjust. You have slots on the top and slots on the bottom and you have to line those up with the slots that go around the perimeter of this atomizer. So if I wanna close off the airflow, which I do about halfway, I'm gonna look and line it up on both sides before I press that down in there. Maybe now it's gonna be a little bit more restricted. I did notice that even though this is a 0.13, I turned it up to 98 watts, and I feel like it could go even higher. Let's do it at an even 100 watts. It was just a real, uh, it was just real airy and it didn't feel uh, warm. And I don't remember, I mean, this is the build that I was using in this atomizer before. And it looks like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 wrap on here. So it's a real wide coil. There's a lot of mass and a lot of surface area to heat up. And so maybe that's why I'm at 100 watts on a 0.13. If I had a 0.13 round wire build or a 0.13 fuse clapton from, from Turk, like that was less wraps that used to utilize different wire in order to get to the resistance. I might not be rocking this at such a high wattage. I mean, 100 watts isn't really real high, you know, these days anymore, I guess, but uh, still, still feels, uh, uh, pardon me, still feels pretty high to me. Let's give it another shot here. And I could, this could go higher. This could go way higher. This could go to like 120 watts. I'm going to try this at 120 watts. That seems to be a, kind of a little bit of a sweet spot for this particular build on this particular atomizer. One thing that I loved about the Indie Duo was, yeah, you got the ability to blow your juice, which is fantastic. I really liked like the two chamber design, like how you could see in between here. And I realized that I like that right up until you use it because as you use it, the warmth from the uh, coils, the warmth from the vapor, the warmth from your breath dragging the air through it, it just fogs that glass over in like 0.2 seconds. Like I originally was like, oh, it's so cool. You can see your build and you can see through the glass and you can see where the airflow goes and that's just really super cool. 
then I forgot about the whole condensation thing and it just fogs over in 0.2 seconds and you don't get to enjoy that particular aspect of this atomizer. Additionally, real weird. I would love this with an 810 instead of this rinky dink, tiny little weird plastic drip tip that fits in here. And that pulled off the whole top cap. So let me have a few more toots. Let me, let me reset my airflow and we'll give it another shot at 120 watts. And this juice, this juice is, I haven't had a, like a bummer juice in a while. So it really bums me out when I'm like, ugh. This juice is just not good. Sorry, I'm not sorry. I'm just being honest. I can't, I can't do this juice, man. But it vapes fine. I mean, it vapes great. It's given me just as good a vape as, like I always say, like as anything on my desk. I mean, maybe not more than the goon. Definitely not more than the goon, but it's given me... A real satisfying vape. This is one of those products that I really loved right away and I really enjoyed using it. I took it with me to the UK. I liked it so much I wanted to use it. And now in retrospect, coming back to it like three years later, I'm like, yeah, like it vapes. It's fine. You can install your coils, you can install some wicks, and it'll definitely vape for you. But just that little bit of romance I guess I had for this is kind of just gone. You start noticing things, you're like, oh yeah, well it is really big, and the airflow is kind of a pain in the ass, and this drip tip is really sort of dumb and dorky. Airflow's real weird, and maybe it's my build, but I feel like this needs a fuck ton of wattage, like more than I would normally give it in order to vape, and I mean, that could be the old coils in there as well. It's, it's a lot of things. It's a rich tapestry. So yeah, there you go. Okay, Indie Duo. Indie Duo, still holding up. Okay, not that that's a product that I don't think you could find many places right now, but it was just something real unique. Uh, Jabo's a real unique guy, and he created some real unique products, and this is one of those real unique Jabo atomizers that I mostly liked at the time, and I'm sure he mostly liked at the time, but I don't think uh, Indie Duo never really took off, never really became like a, you know, you never went to a vape event and just saw a sea of Indie Duos, you know what I mean? I've been to a vape event and seen a sea of people using goons, or Kennedy's, you know? Never quite saw that reaction with the Indie Duo. And as far as this juice is concerned, I'm sorry, Lioness Elixirs. I personally just don't wanna vape this juice uh, ever again, ever again. But I will give you a chance at redemption. Maybe in a few weeks, we're gonna grab out one of the other ones. Maybe we'll grab out Ferocity because strawberry watermelon just sounds uh, so much more delightful than pistachio cheesecake with raspberry medicine dribbled on top of it. So that, I think, is going to wrap up that for now. Uh, we're getting pretty late into the afternoon here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go eat lunch, but when we get back from lunch, which, yes, is a Trader Joe's chicken Caesar salad. I cut up some Havarti dill in it. Oh, and it's, it's just fantastic. Well, when we come back from lunchtime, what we're going to jump right into is some viewer mails. <laughs> Well, lunch was just delicious. Thanks for asking. Trader Joe's chicken Caesar salad. Trader Joe's chicken Caesar salad just all day long. Trader, jo Trader Joe's chicken Caesar salad has been my lunch, I think, every day for this entire year. I, and I don't know why that is. It's just a quick, easy thing to eat that I really, really like. And, uh, seems to be okay for me like <laughs> i haven't contracted any weird like you know lettuce uh, you know lettuce diseases they did like a lettuce recall not too long ago which look was a little bit scary but i powered through i kept eating the chicken caesar salad so anyway that doesn't matter what we're gonna do right now is answer some freaking viewer mail so i got some viewer mail here first one up on ye old chopping block is tom Tom wrote to us and said, hey Nick, I have a little question. I've been thinking about trying dripping. I think a single coil alley Addy would suit me best. I seem to like higher ohm builds. My question is, what makes a good dripper? I've heard you say you like to bleh, or however you spell it, your liquid, right onto the coil. The whole paint your coil seems like a pain. Single coil addies seem to be designed that way. I'm just wondering, is it if that is it, or are there other things to look for or avoid, like airflow, deep wells, etc.? Thanks for all you do. I have about seven months with no smokes on your videos. 
Um, fantastic. Uh, help me guide through my vaping journey and let's keep on vaping. Please excuse my English A skills. Thanks, Tom. No, Tom, no worries. I got through that. I got through that no problem and I'm a dyslexic person, so I have a real hard time reading fucking anything. So you're thinking about dripping. Well, that's a good decision. I, I'm a dripper. I like drippers. I personally like uh, my, like most dual coil drippers. Like like I said a thousand times probably in this blog already. I really like the Goon. I really like the Recoil, and I really like the Kennedy. The Kennedy you do have to pop and paint, but the Goon and the Recoil are very bleh, your juice friendly. Twisted Messes 24 Pro Series, as well could honestly be a good option for you. So the Twisted Messes 24 Pro Series comes with a little Ultem insert for the deck that allows you to run it as a straight up like single coil deck. And it's great. I've ran it in single coil mode. I usually run it in dual coil mode, but the Twisted Messes 24 Pro Series is very bleh, your juice friendly, and is also a real, real high, high, high quality atomizer. But if you're looking for something that's like legitimately single coil. There's uh, two right now that I really, really love. One of them is the Recurve RDA from Mike Vapes, which is, it makes for a great dripper. It's, it's, he designed it, I believe, to be more of a squonker atomizer, but it works really well as a dripper, in my opinion. That Recurve is a dope dripper, single coil dripper. And honestly, that new Hermetic RDA from Suck My Mod. I just put up a review earlier this week. I think it's a fantastic single coil atomizer. I use it for squonking. I use it for dripping. Uh, I use it for both and it, and it works both ways real easy. So one of those two, like if you're really after like a single coil dripper atomizer, um, I, I think there was a single coil version of the dead rabbit that was like the squonker version of the dead rabbit. But again, that Dead Rabbit deck is, it's much better as a dual coil dripper. Single coil dripper, it doesn't work out quite so well. Single coil squonker, it doesn't work out quite so well. And I feel like RTA, that Dead Rabbit deck, I don't know. It, I just don't think it works. Uh, I just don't think it works that well in that type of situation. But yeah, I mean, off the top of my head, that's what I can think of as the Hermetic and the Recurve in, in recent memory, like really good single coil atomizers out there. There are some single coil atomizers out there like uh, the Hadley, you know, like the, uh, you know, the Wasp Nano might actually be a good one for you too. It's something I've never tried, but everyone, I mean, it's something I've been meaning to buy, but literally everyone has it was only good things to say about the wasp nano rda like i said i've never tried one i've been meaning to get one i've never heard anyone say anything bad about the wasp nano rda you only hear the wasp nano brought up when it's like fuck yeah love that love that atomizer love the wasp nano so that could be that could be an option for you um as well there tom no worries about your English A skills, they're they are just fine. I wouldn't have even noticed otherwise. And thank you so much, uh, Tom, for writing in that email. Got another one here. Oh, okay, we got a dog email. We got another dog email this week. Joe. Joe writes in and says, Hi, Nick. I'm Joe, or you can call me Four Eyes. Yes, it's a stage name. I'm a big fan of the vlog. I really enjoy looking forward to Thursdays. It's vlog day uh, because I get to unwind, de-stress, and watch a video about my favorite topic. Absolutely. Well, what? Welcome. Welcome, Four Eyes, to the vlog. Good to have you. And since you like dogs so much, I thought you might like to take a look at my pooches, Piggy the Blonde and Sky the Gray one. Keep up the good work. I always watch to the end of the vlog, but instead of a hug or whatever, uh, I would love a manly handshake. Sure. I can accommodate. I can definitely accommodate half of that request. I will give you a handshake no questions asked. The manliness level of that handshake, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see where we land on that. Whenever I shake Dwayne's hand, he just crushes it into oblivion. So apparently I don't give really manly, uh, manly, manly handshakes. But Four Eyes, uh, yeah, Four Eyes has some dogs. Oh yes, and I definitely saved the pictures. All right, suddenly Piggy, yeah. Oh my God, look at that pupper. Look at that pupper. Piggy, and then suddenly Sky. Yeah, look at Sky. Look at Sky being a vape model, posing next to that modern tank right there. You could you could start an Instagram account of this dog being a vape model 
for for vapes um not only would that be hilarious i would definitely definitely follow that instagram great looking puppers you got there and thank you so much joe for sending an email in and sharing your puppers with us got another viewer mail here from Sebastian. Uh, Sebastian wrote in and said, hello, I met you in Utah during your local shop tour and I picked up a recoil Revo from you and have used it ever since. Best RDA I've ever used. All right. Well, thank you very much, Sebastian. I'm, I'm very glad you're, you're happy with your purchase there. I was wondering a few things about coil placement. On the snakebite top cap, do you place the coils so that the air directly hits the coils or so that the air goes beneath the coil and up? Ah, good question. Thank you, Sebastian. Well, thank you, Sebastian. Um, so yeah, there's I when I use my recoil or my recoil rebel and I use the snake bite airflow, I always lip pull my coils up just a little bit. If you if you just install them and leave them where they are, the snake bite airflow is definitely going to hit your coils, but I find that I like it a little bit more. I get a little bit better of airflow and I get a little bit better of flavor if the coils are centered on the deck. First of all, center your coils and rate lift just lift them up just a little bit. What you want to do is you want the airflow hitting your coil and then underneath your coil, exactly like you said. When it's hitting the broad side of your coil and that airflow is angled down because of that, you know, that snake bite airflow, it's going to hit your coil and it's going to go zoop and right up into your mouth. It's going to be great. You're going to have a great vape experience. You're going to get some really good flavor out of that as well. Me personally, that's just how I do it. In fact, that's how I do it with kind of a lot of atomizers i guess if the air where's my goon oh i left my goon in the living room damn it but it's the same thing even on the goon like uh, i put my coils in and i just raise them up just a little bit i like the airflow to hit my coils but i also like the airflow to go under the coils it, it just it overall makes in my opinion for a uh, pretty stellar vape experience sebastian anyway thank you so much sebastian i'm glad you're enjoying that rebel rda Got another viewer mail here from Jerobi. I don't. I'm definitely not saying his name correctly. Uh, but he writes in and says, "Good morning and uh, after evening. Apply appropriately greeting. Apply apply appropriate greeting here. So we're gonna say good afternoon, sir. Hey, Grim. Quick, short, uppy, closey question for you." Uh, are you a Game of Thrones fan? If not, what's your problem? Just wondering if you and Pickles watch and are looking forward to the series wrapping up next year. Thanks for all you do. Uh, advocate and keep up the good work. P.S. I'm the same guy that sent you the extremely slow-mo vid blowing vape and then asking for a shout out at the end. Not sure if you remember that but you put it in the beginning of the vlog last year. I was bored while in Houston getting slammed by Hurricane Harvey, and I thought I should send you a vid to pass the time. Um, I do remember that. I definitely remember that video, George. Um, and he goes by George. He signed it George. His email said Jerobi. Maybe I shouldn't be putting that out there, but his name is George. So here's a here's an answer to your question that you're going to find very disappointing. No, I don't watch Game of Thrones. I've actually never watched a full episode of Game of Thrones. Um, so the story goes like this. A long time ago, I mean, a ages ago, years and years and years ago, I want to say it was like 2012, 2012-ish. Um, this guy I worked with, uh, Mike, he lent me the, the first Game of Thrones book. He's like, have you read Game of Thrones? And I was like, no. He's like, oh, it's really good. You should definitely read it. Here, I'll lend you the book. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I borrowed the very first Game of Thrones book from him, and I tried on like 17 different occasions to actually read the book. And look, as a dyslexic person, reading books is hard. Reading in general is really hard for me because of my dyslexia. I power through. I do the best I can. I've read, you know, many books in my life and I'm reading 1984 right now. I read Ready Player One recently as well. So I can, I can read books. It just takes me a long time because I have to really focus and really concentrate on it. And it's really hard to do that and, and remember the names of all the characters that have like weird medieval sort of otherworldly names as well and like these locations of places in this in this fictional universe I couldn't do it I literally 
could not do it and so i gave up on reading game of thrones and then game of thrones the tv show came out and it came out uh on hbo and i don't have hbo so i'm like all right well i guess i'm just not watching game of thrones like this is before the time of like uh you know, uh, instant streaming stuff, I guess. I mean, not really before the time of instant streaming stuff. It's just at that time, Game of Thrones wasn't streaming anywhere that I could watch it or I would have to pay more money to watch it. And I, I wasn't all about that. So I just didn't watch Game of Thrones. Just didn't watch Game of Thrones. Another seasons go by, didn't watch it. Other seasons go by, didn't watch it. Last year, I watched uh, about a half an episode, I think. At ECC, at the ECC Squad House, um, everybody's really into Game of Thrones. It's it's like a thing. Like D D Danielle's into Game of Thrones. Josh and Ruby are into Game of Thrones. Jess Marie DHD is really into Game of Thrones. And so it was like an event one night. It's like, okay, we're all going to watch Game of Thrones. And I didn't really have a whole lot of interest in it. And so I went outside and, and partook in some cannabis cast. And I was listening to music. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go hang out with everybody upstairs. You know, I'm all alone down here. I'll go upstairs and sit through some Game of Thrones. And so I went into the bedroom and I was sitting there and watching Game of Thrones. And I couldn't, like, I just couldn't. <laughs> Maybe it was because of my state of mind at the time. But I couldn't get into it. It was really bizarre. I couldn't get into it. And I didn't understand why every scene in Game of Thrones was just people talking intensely at each other. Every scene that I saw in Game of Thrones, I was thinking in my head, does nobody eat in this universe? Could they have be having this conversation like around a dinner table where they're eating and showing that they're like actual people, like lending a little bit of like realism to it? You know what I mean? It was just scene after scene of people just talking, like intensely talking at each other. And uh, maybe it's because I didn't know the characters or, it, you know, it could have been any number of things. I, I just didn't get into it. And here's the thing. I say that a lot. Have you noticed I say here's the thing a lot? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Here's the thing. Game of Thrones is probably one of those shows that I'm going to watch in the future. You know, it's like... Uh, Breaking Bad. I didn't watch Breaking Bad when it was on television. I binged watched Breaking Bad m many, many years later. So I have a feeling, give it a year or two, maybe give it a year or three, and then someday I'll be like, I really want to watch Game of Thrones, and then I'll have all of it ready to stream in front of me on HBO, and then I can just watch Game of Thrones. But as it stands, as of uh, September 24th, 2018, I have not watched any Game of Thrones, and... Uh, I apologize, and I guess that's that's my problem. He's like, if not, if not, what's your problem? Well, my problem is I don't watch it. I guess that's my only problem in life, isn't it? Anyway, uh, thank you so much for writing it, Brady. Got a last last viewer mail here from Brady. Brady writes in and says, "Hey man, my name is Brady. I was hoping to get your opinion on that Blade of God mods in Russia. Is it worth it? Anything detrimentally a bad about it? General pros and cons. Thanks for any help you can give. Vape away, sir, and good day. Brady, let me go grab it. Uh... Okay, well, okay, uh, the Hermetic might work on here. My Dripper Hermetic. Did I pull the build out of there? I definitely did, didn't I? Damn it. All right, so I, I don't have an atomizer to show you this particular mod, but this is the Blade of God. I think it's called Blade of God by God's Mod out of Russia, and it, it's a good mech mod. If you're considering purchasing this mech mod, just purchase it. The only downside that I've noticed so far is that it can only use an 18650 battery, which don't get me wrong, 18650 batteries in mech mods are fine. They work great and they've been tried and true. Like I've used 18650s in mech mods longer than I've used 2700s or 21700s or anything like that. So 18650s, you're limited a little bit in your amps and how, how low you can build, but I'm assuming if you're looking into a mech mod, you're already kind of well aware of battery amp limits and, and things like this. It works on an 18650. It's freaking phenomenal. It's I could do a review for it right now. Ready? Here's my review of the Blade of God by God Mods. It's fucking awesome. It is contoured, fits in your hand real well. It's a five red, uh, five red, what? Hybrid 510 on top. And then you have this switch. And this switch is spring loaded on one side and then it has a band of aluminum along the bottom. And all that happens, God, I wish I had an atomizer. 
Oh, I don't have an atomizer to put on here and it's making me insane. Let's put the Reload Vapor RTA on there. It's got a nice protruding 510 pin and is 24 millimeters around, so it should fit perfect, perfect on this God mod. Or the, I, I kept calling it the God mod, but I think it's called the Blade of God, as Brady had pointed out. So here you go, boom. I got this on top, you put a single 18650 on the inside, and then you put your switch assembly in there. And this is made out of resin, and it is machined or lathed so perfectly that it just, it fits in there perfect. It's like a perfect fit, right? It just slides in there like a glove. And then you have the ring on here that is your, you know, the base of your mech mod. You screw this all together, that's literally it. There's nothing to adjust. If I hit the button, you'll see vapors come out of the tank. Wow, that's su surprisingly powerful vape on this, on this uh, tank. And the way that this works is the switch is in constant contact with your battery via this spring-loaded little dealie right here. This slides in here and you can fire it without that ring on there. Like, as long as this ring is touching the bottom of the mech mod, yeah, it, it's gonna fire. This ring is kind of superfluous in its function. All it does is hold on the switch and the switch is a nice little like shiny resin material. It's got a quick little throw on it and it hits hard and it hits every single time. This is easily one of my favorite mech mods of 2018. Like one of my favorite mech mods that I've received this year. And the only reason I never really did a review for it is it was older, it's a little bit older of a product. If you search on YouTube, there's plentiful reviews for this. In fact, I think Mike Vapes reviewed this same exact mech mod, which is why I haven't really reviewed it. I'm like, okay, well, there's already, you know, fuck, there's already a bunch of reviews out there. Like, is anybody gonna care about an older-ish Russian mech mod as dope as it is? And trust me, it's, it's dope. It is a super dope mech mod. I would uh, highly recommend it. If you're if you're looking into this mech, just do it. Just get it. It's rad. It's a rad mech. And now that I've got it out of my closet, and now that I'm using it again, um, I uh, I want to continue using it. I'm gonna have to build something for this specifically, just because it's 24 millimeters, and I have zero 24 millimeter atomizers set up right now. So I'm gonna have to do something with that. But yes, Brady, yes. There's nothing that's horrible about that mech mod. It's like 99% awesomeness and I love it. I really like that mech mod. In fact, it's essentially 100% awesomeness. I'm deducting 1% just because it only uses an 18650 battery. If they did a 2700 version of this or a 21700 version of this, it would, I mean, it might honestly be one of the last mech mods I ever use. Like this can go toe to toe with like the Kennedy Vindicator as far as like quality of vape and quality of mech mod. They're just, they're just beautiful. I mean, there is a clear, clear distinction between something like this, something that is machined so, so, so so perfectly and and lathed so perfectly and everything fits together so well and is you can just tell from using it how qui high quality it is there's a world of difference between something like this and then like something like a like a $30 chinese box mod you know what i mean like you're going to notice a big difference in quality when you when you start using higher quality uh, mods and devices and things like that. Anyway, Brady, I'm sorry I was getting off on a tangent there. Brady, thank you. Thank you so much for writing in. And that's it. That's all I got. That's all I got for viewer mails. If anybody else out there has any viewer mails that they would like to see possibly answered on this show, send them on over to me, please. Nick at GrimGreen.com. <sighs> And you can just mark your subject uh, viewer mail. Just put viewer mail and it will get read and it will end up in this file of like 70 viewer mails that I have right now to go through. And they, and they keep piling on every week. Every week that you wait, your your odds of getting on the, on the vlog as a viewer mail just uh, go exponentially down. Anyway, we're going to wrap up the viewer mail. And right now, what we're going to do is... I am going to review a vape thing that I've never even tried before. Grim Green reviews 
a vape thing that he's never even tried before. All right, so here we go, and it's still even in the plastic. So the welcome to Grim Green Reviews, a vape thing that he's never even tried before. For those of you that are new to the vlog here, or you've never seen this segment before, this is where I go back through a product that I got at one point and then just never opened, never vaped, you know, more things came and it kind of just went off my table and went into a closet, never got a review, never got opened, never got shown on YouTube, never anything, never tried it, don't know nothing about it. Well, I'm gonna set this up and I'm gonna vape it and we're gonna try it out. Unfortunately, it's not a topper today or Fortunately, it's not a topper today, which means I don't have to do any sudden building all of a sudden. But what this is, is a mod. This is the Smoant Charon Mini mod that I believe came out in like April or May of this year. At least that's when I kind of remember getting this. It's only a few months old, but it's one of those things like I literally just peeled off the plastic. I'm opening this for the first time and we're going to investigate the Charon Mini because, okay, well, that's big for us. For a, for a mod that has Mini in the title, that is thick. That is a thick mod right there. And, and it's, I thought it would be smaller. With a name like Mini, I was expecting something much, much smaller. I mean, even from the outside, it kind of looks like it's like a short little guy, but this is not a short little guy. This is kind of a big, big little guy here. But it looks like it has a raised 24 millimeter 510 connection on there. I'm not really sure. We'll have to put a tank on this or something. The back is probably magnetic, like most mods are. Battery sled, very clearly marked. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Let's get some... Uh, Let's get some old batteries out here and put some batteries in this thing. So positive side up, positive side down. I'm assuming this has one of those like, yeah, it's got a really cool display, real, real super crisp looking display. It feels real, real, real techy, looks real nice. Is that a screensaver? Oh, that's their clock screensaver. It's like a, it's like a steampunky like gears looking screensaver. Um, I do like this display. I don't like the animated gears in the corner. To me that really, can you see these animated gears? See those gears just whirring away in the corner right there? I find that, uh, I think that takes away from the overall aesthetic of this mod. Oh, yeah, and then there's that, uh, there's that weird exposed clock screensaver. All right, so we are gonna put this uh, Vaporesso Skrr tank on here, which, boom, yeah, it works on there. Fits on there real nice. The bottom of the Skrr tank is 24 millimeters. I definitely 100% prefer the Vaporesso clock. I think that looks so much cooler than the steampunky, like, exposed gears clock. Uh, so there are up and down buttons. Sure. All right now we're sitting at 5 watts, so we're going to put this up. Where's my resistance? 0.18. Oh, that's pretty slick. That's a pretty little slick animation that happens here. It does adjust in 0.1 watt increments, which... Look, that's kind of going to just be the standard thing, right? Like everything's just going to adjust in 0 0.1 watt increments. It's my least favorite thing in vaping. I would much rather have it adjust in like 0.5 watt increments or full watt increments is like my dream. Anytime I would get a DNA anything, I would instantly hook it up to the eScribe software and I would change that to adjust in one watt increments. The back is kind of, uh, the back is kind of cool. It looks kind of cool. It's not textured in any way. It's really gloss, gloss finish on here, like plasticky gloss finish, but it's got a pretty cool pattern on there. Kind of see that like, you know, interlocking gradient pattern on there. I, I think that looks pretty cool, honestly. Ah, uh, yes, three clicks get you into the menu. Let's see if we can change around the wallpaper. Uh, the wall paper is just for behind the menu so that's it I'm gonna set uh, looks like a city back there yeah and that's it you got variable wattage mode you got temperature control mode and you got settings where I'm assuming you can yeah change the brightness change the display change the screensaver change the time what style too but you can have it do the time or 
the wallpaper. Well, fuck, we're setting it as an eagle. You kind of just give it a long press and yeah, okay, now this display, uh, so I switched the display to the wallpaper display. No more animated gears in the background or anything like that. It's just a picture of a city. It says Smoant, it says 60 watts. Boom, done. I like that so much better. All right, well, let's give this Skr tank a try at 60 watts on the Smoant Charon Mini Go. Not bad. Not bad at all. It's tasting pretty good, feeling pretty good. So I like the feel of this. I wish it wasn't so fat this way. I wish it was just boop, just a little bit skinnier, I guess, right there. Feels kind of bulky in the hand, and I'm definitely gonna have to change when that screensaver comes on. Why did five clicks turn it off and five clicks before got me to the menu? Oh, four. Four clicks gets you to the menu. Four clicks. All right, we're gonna change the wallpaper from the city now because I don't like that. They only give you six wallpapers, nine wallpapers to choose from. So let's go with, let's do like the space thing. Space thing. Space thing? Yeah, space thing. That looks much better. And you can change when that screensaver comes on. You can change the timeout, but for some reason it doesn't in seconds only, which I don't know, that's weird. Why would you wanna be able, it's like, well, one minute and 57 seconds, I think is too soon, but one minute and 58 seconds is much better. Why even have that option? Why not just do it in minutes or 30 seconds at a time? We don't need this like fine detail of like, oh, I wanna have my screensaver time out at two minutes and 31 seconds exactly. It's gonna make such a big difference. And on the wallpaper clock, uh, it doesn't even show you the clock, the screensaver it just pops up and it's just a picture of a big eagle. It would be nice if the time was there instead of just a, just a picture of an eagle. It's good. It's a pretty banging little device. It feels pretty responsive. I mean, I can't click the button without hearing some sizzle. There's no way to click the button and not hear the sizzle. So I feel like that's a pretty responsive button. It's one of those buttons that uh, is clicky kind of everywhere, which is a nice change. I thought it was one of those like hingy ones. Like a lot of mods have that like hingy button, but this one, you can press it down at the bottom and it will still fire. No. Wow. Okay, never mind. I take back everything I just said. Click it at the bottom and nothing happens. Well, I mean, it seems to be quick. It seems to be pretty quick and responsive. I do actually really like this display. It's a nice big display. I feel like the other one with the gear or with the gears and like the revving, like that, that's, that's fine and good, but I like something a little bit more simple. With that said, this might be too simple. I feel like there's just a lot of wasted space on this particular screen. Like if the screen went down longer and you could actually like put your own pictures to be there for wallpapers instead of choosing like a duck and a dog and an eagle and a soccer ball and space. Like some other options like if I could throw a fucking Grim Green logo on there or like Recoil RDA logo on there that would be super sick as well as it stands. I don't think you can do that. Here's the thing, all around, this is a pretty rad little device. I kind of like it, I kind of like holding it. I kind of really like that button, but you do have to hit it at the top. I like that it's 24 millimeters, this tank fits on there fine. I like these clicky adjustment up and down buttons. I like the display. I don't like how thick it is. I feel like for a mod called Mini, Charon Mini, that this is just too big. I think this could have just been called the Charon V2 or the Charon 1.5 or name it something completely else. Get away from the Charon brand. It doesn't really fit into it other than the fact that it's named similarly, I guess. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's the Charon Mini. Here's the thing, let's go see how much uh, vape budget hands we need for this. Looks like Element Vape has them in stock right now. Smoant Charon Mini, 225. Full color screen, for some reason it can do 225 watt output, which, I mean, I think I've been above 100 watts like two or three times this year. So I don't know why, the, I don't know who, who, who goes up that high. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you vape above 200 watts? Do you get even? Do you vape even close to 200 uh, watts on a regulated device? Nice screen, nice interface, nice mod all around. It's pretty rad. Here's the thing: it's fine. It's a fine mod. The Smoant Charon Mini. 
is a is a fer- perfectly fine and serviceable mod. It will do whatever you need it to do. It's just real boxy and I don't know, boxy and thick and you know, it's not like there's a crazy amount of innovation here. It's a box that holds two batteries and has a display. Like, welcome to vaping. That's, I mean, we've been vaping on that for years, years and years and years, right? Vape budget hands, eh, it's around 55 bucks. Eh, so, I mean, you know, they're not giving them away, but it's also gonna take a little bit of vape budget hands, I guess, to get there. 50, 55 bucks? Yeah, that's something, I mean, that's something you would have to make a conscious decision. Like, all right, I'm going to spend $55 on this Smoant Charon Mini. If you do, you're going to get a pretty decent little mod here. Just a pretty decent little mod all around. Now, I mean, if we're going to play the Aliens game, which is something I do in my normal reviews, or the FDA game where they come and take everything I have and I have nothing left to vape, is the Charon Mini something I'm going to seek out and buy? Ah, probably not. Uh, there's, I have mech mo- I've, I've regulated mods on my desk that I like more than this little guy right here. But, I mean, even with that said, it's still a good feeling mod. Looks pretty clicky, spring-loaded, two 18650s. I mean, on paper, it's a great mod. On execution, it just is overall, I don't know, a little bit boring, I guess. I'm a mod, which is fine. Mods are allowed to be boring, I guess. It's nothing really special, nothing to write home about, but it's a very, it's a, see, that's the problem. It's, this, the problem with this is that there is with a lot of stuff out there today. It's just fine. It's a, it's a fine device. Anyway, there you go. Smoant Charon Mini 225 watt box mod. In fact, I'm not even going to keep this around. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pop the batteries out of this. I'm going to put this mod back into its original packaging, back into this original packaging. And then what I'm gonna do is just say, whoever wants this, just comment, I want the Smoant down below. First person to comment, I want Smoant, it's yours. I'll hit you up uh, and I'll send this to you and I'm gonna charge you two bucks for it if that's cool. Just cover those pesky FDA fees. Yeah, that's it, we're coming down. We're coming down to the end of the vlog here and uh, we're gonna end this vlog in the way that we've always, well not always, we haven't always ended the vlog this way. I mean, if you go back far enough, you're gonna see that that's untrue. You're being misled right now. I feel like CNN. No, okay, that wasn't a slam on, on CNN. I know a lot of people like CNN. I watch CNN, CNN's fine. I was just trying to make like a, you know, a news media joke. Didn't work. But we are going to end this vlog right now uh, with my favorite segment, everybody's favorite segment. It's favorite comments of the week. So before we jump into my favorite comments of the week, I do have to give a shout out to Mr. Nico from Finland, who always helps me capture some favorite comments of the week that I might otherwise miss on my videos. Um, I really do my best to get down into those comments every single day, read, respond, screen capture. It's all it's all a big process. It's part of my workflow. I have it on my schedule. It's like YouTube comment time. I, I feel like I have a burp coming, but I can't get it out. And I know it's just gonna come out like at the most inopportune time, like just right in the middle of a sentence, but hey, doesn't matter. First favorite comment of the week here from Vapor Geral. A Brazilian vapor lives in a nightmare. We cannot import. Our black market works at high prices. E-cigs is illegal here. Tobacco products is not illegal. Shocking. Sh- shocking that tobacco products are not illegal, yet they're going after vaping, this intrusive, disruptive to tobacco industry. I'm very sorry to hear that. I have a petition in the last vlog. Was it in the last vlog? Was it in the last vlog or the 510 report? I have a petition. Uh, I'll find it. I'll find it and I'll put it in the description of this video for Brazilian vapors to uh, to utilize and fill out and try to make some change in Brazil. Sounds like they're coming down on vaping really, really very hard in that they already have a black market for vaping, which is what's gonna happen in the United States. I mean, if Scott Godley and the FDA have their way and, and rip this far less harmful alternative to, you know, from, for smokers off the market, 
What do you think's going to happen, Scott Gottlieb? We're going to have a black market. Of course, we're all going to become the goddamn Pablo Escobar of vaping. People in America will vape. Got another comment here from Dirty Coils. Hey, Nick. So the LED on the Mass Mod Squonk actually shows a live read of your battery level. The color change when firing is a live read battery sag, and it will change depending on what build you're using. Blue is 4.2 to 3.9 volts. Green is 3.9 to 3.6 volts. Yellow is 3. 3.6 to 3.3 volts and red is 3.2 and below. Hope you're enjoying it. Yeah, dirty coils. Uh, absolutely. Really, really enjoying this mass mod. Really enjoying this mass mod topped with the hermetic and now I got a red drip tip so it's really all coming together just freaking perfectly. When I press my finger on here, blue. It lights up blue, which means these batteries are uh, essentially fully charged. They're above 3.9 volts, which is that's nice. That's actually really super, very reassuring. Um, one critique I have on this mass mods is the LED needs to be on the other side of the bottle or farther behind the bottle, like back here in this corner, because I can look in there and you kind of lose that, like, if you hold it at this angle, you get that real strong, like, oh, the bottle is just glowing blue. And then if you kind of turn it like this, you can just see the LED in there, which is, I don't know a little less magical, I guess. I want my mods to be more magical. But yes, very much, very much enjoying this Dirty Coils. Absolutely. And that's a... Oh, it just went to green. Did you see that? It was green for a second. What does green mean? Oh, green means it's going below 3.9 volts. I wonder if I give it a few more toots if we can turn this blue into a green. Let's Let's try. Not yet. Green! Oh, that's so cool. I just literally witnessed my battery drop from 3.9 to below 3.9 volts. When I say it out loud, it doesn't seem that exciting. Still, still, that's a, that's a very cool feature. Uh, thank you, Dirty Coils, for that information. Got another favorite comment of the week. Number three comes from uh, Robin. Robin left a comment and said, why fart and waste it when you can burp and taste it? First of all, that's super gross. Also, I'm totally stealing that to use it. I've never heard that before. And it's because I was getting, it's because I was asking for feedback on burps. Look, I don't want to upset people. I don't want to piss people off. If I burp and you don't like it, then I apologize. But there's going to be burps. And the, you know, surprisingly, the majority of people were like, burp? Yeah, burp. Go to your burp party. Have a burp party. Just burp like crazy, which is good because beer segment. I mean, there's just always going to be burps in there. Got another favorite comment of the week from Husky Doggo. And I don't know what video he was talking about. I don't know what video this was left on, but he said, the shape makes me want to get a haircut. And I just... <laughs> what? I don't understand what that means, dude. Don't understand what that means. The shape makes me want to get a haircut. Honestly, though, uh, Husky Doggo, I would like to steal that. I'm going to start using that at, at other opportune times that don't make any sense. And I'm not, I'm going to use it for everything. Any Anytime anyone asks me my opinion, they're going to be like, what do you think of this t-shirt? I'm going to be like, well, the color of it kind of makes me want to get a haircut. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. I think that's really funny. Anyway, uh, one more comment of the week here. Oh, Eric. Eric W, often frequent commenter, frequent comment of the week, uh, prize winner, even though there's no prize. Uh, Eric, Eric W left a comment and said, lol, please say minimal again. And it's because I say it in that weird way. Whenever I grab the juice out and I have to grab the juice out to say it, minimal, minimal. It's because the eyes are lowercase. So my eyes just see M-N-M-A-L, minimal 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 eric is that enough minimals for you and then i don't know <laughs> and then i don't know if this guy was like trolling me or what i'm not even gonna erase his name uh midnight dreary left this comment maybe you might not try to remove the chop top drip tip and drop the chop top drip tip if you weren't off your fucking bin on good quality sniff you big-headed smug bastard <laughs> What? I know he's talking about when I dropped my chop top drip tip. I was trying to take it off and I dropped it. I, I kind of see where that's he was going. If you weren't 
off your fucking bin on good quality sniff. Don't know what that means, uh, you big-headed smug bastard. So, okay, so apparently I have a big head and I'm a smug bastard too. I don't know. I don't get it. Anyway, thanks for the entertainment, Midnight Dreary. And all you have to do to get in the comments of the week is just comment on a video, any video, any and all videos. You can comment on them. I will see it or Nico will see it and y you might end up here in the uh, in the comments of the week. Just don't try too hard. Like, there's people out there that just... They really try to get into comments of the week. They'll write something real weird, real outlandish, where it's like, okay, you're clearly like, you're definitely trying to get my attention. I much prefer like just little witty, witty things, witty, funny, witty, funny comments, things like that. Just don't try too hard. I mean, that's like a general rule in life. Just don't try too hard. Like, don't try so hard. Don't try too hard. Anyway, anyway, holy crap. Hang on. Are we done? Is this the end of the vlog? Let me take a quick look around the room and make sure I didn't forget anything. No. I don't know what sound that was. No. 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 I think we're all good. Good and burpy. Why fart and taste it when you can burp and taste it? That's not how it goes. Anyway, yeah. That's going to wrap up this vlog once again. And I always say this, but everybody that makes it to the end of the vlog, you're literally literally my favorite people on earth. If I ever have the opportunity to meet you in real life, I do dispense hugs or crisp high fives, or apparently there is a third option now, which is a very manly handshake. I've yet to do that one. Anyway, um, I did want to mention that I use old fidget spinners as uh, atomizer stands. So go through all of your old fidget spinners and you can use them as atomizer stands. That's my pro tip of the week. Anyway, seriously. Enough rambling from me. That was the vlog. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to grab this, my mass mods and my hermetic, just because it's real close to me. I'm going to vape my face off, and I'm going to edit some freaking video. But that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you once again so much for joining me. And as always, let's all say it together. Let's keep on vaping. All right, who said it with me? Hey.